this is like our final stop right now on our road trip 2.0 with Duquesne Light. We've been everywhere through Allegheny County talking to some great companies. We might save the best for last. Because <laughs> we have Rapid Flow Technologies. We have Griffin Schultz with us today. Griffin, thanks for hanging out with Yo, us. Thanks for having me. This sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. Oh, it's been great, man. Being in this Model S has been so much fun. Yeah. And we're going to drive around the city and talk about what Rapid Flow is up to and how what you do keeps traffic flowing. Great. It's simple as that. And it plays in the EV, AV stuff everywhere because we need smart cities. Yeah, right? absolutely. Super cool. So let's take off and see if I can do a couple Pittsburgh lefts along the way and have a little bit of fun. <laughs> Great. Well, we love this city and we yeah. love trying to optimize traffic and make it flow a little better. So we're uh, really excited and glad to be a part of this day. Absolutely, man. So first off, what's your background? So I've been, I'm, I'm a Pittsburgh transplant, so I've been in Pittsburgh right. now for uh, 20 years almost. Okay. So um, I've been in uh, business technology management for about the last 20 years. Okay. Uh, prior to that, I um, uh, got my MBA and I got my MBA transitioning out of the uh, public sector. I actually worked huh. on Capitol Hill for a U.S. Congresswoman. I worked on a Senate campaign, a presidential okay. campaign. And then at one point, I was the assistant deputy mayor for the city of Philadelphia, wow. which is helpful yeah. because we're selling the cities right now. Exactly. I mean, you know all about what their infrastructure needs and problems are and really what it takes to get stuff done in those places because, man, that's that's no easy task. Yeah, so, and, it, and it's good. It's, it's, the, the, it's helpful to know the government side of how to get things done in government, but also the political side and what these officials need to do to get reelected and definitely. please their constituents. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah. So we're actually taking a little road trip over to Carnegie Mellon, which I know is near and dear because you are a Carnegie Mellon University spin out yep. as far as that goes. So as we go over there, let's talk about rapid flow because right now we sit in traffic a lot yep. and you keep that from happening. You keep the lights timed and the traffic going. What, what's up with rapid flow? Yeah. So let's, uh, let's start with Carnegie Mellon. Sure. So we were spun out of Carnegie Mellon and um, the, the market that we're in, adaptive traffic control has been around since the eighties. Okay. But a lot of the, the systems on the market today are based on old analog traffic theory, uh, traffic control and management theory. So our two co-founders and the inventors of our technology come from an uh, AI, artificial intelligence, robotic system background at Absolutely. CMU. Yeah. So they sort of came at it from a very different perspective. Um, they've been building optimization and scheduling and planning systems for the military, for complex business systems. This for, is like military-grade stuff you're working on. <laughs> it is. In fact, I love it. In fact, one of our co-founders, uh, I believe he had the first AI in space. Whoa. So these guys are, um, you know, as you can imagine, coming out of CMU, you know, yeah. experts at, at, at optimization. Absolutely. So they took that expertise and really transferred it to traffic control in a way that no one uh, had done previously. So uh, it allows our system to be, you know, much more cutting edge and, and use uh, much more cutting edge tools, uh, optimization and scheduling tools. So basically, I mean, obviously it's more sophisticated than just timing the lights so we can keep keep flowing as we're not doing so well right now because yeah. we, we, we need your technologies everywhere we can yes. possibly put them. So, but it also integrates, it's going to allow, it allows um, autonomous vehicles to communicate back and forth into the grid. So. It, the grid knows there's 10 cars coming and it needs to hold the light or change the light. Is that, how's that work? Absolutely. Yeah. So right now, um, our, our uh, product, our, our software called SureTrack is blind. So it needs uh, another system to tell it what's going on at the intersection. I see. And right now, primarily that's video detectors. As you go through some of these signals, we can see okay. video cameras. Yeah. So, so, so those are, those are cameras that are up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's one way that we, uh, that we detect, um, what vehicles or pedestrians or other okay. roads are, are at the intersection. Right. But in the future, as more connected vehicles uh, start uh, traveling on the road, they can tell us directly their location, their speed, and even their route information. Uh -huh. And when we can feed that level of detail into our software, we can optimize and plan even better, uh, oh, even better than see, just video. That's detection. what I'm talking about, right? Because it knows of the moment who's coming down the road and what speeds. And yeah. What, 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 density and everything like that yeah as far as that goes so this is like powerful stuff i mean i'm thinking about this saving people a lot of time and a lot of frustration and a yeah. lot of heartache when you're sitting around like i just might if i want the light change yeah and now you're actually making that happen yeah so tell us about your, your deployments in pittsburgh yeah so uh, we started in pittsburgh and i think it was around 2012 when we deployed our first nine intersections okay and uh, you know talking about savings 
when you look at the, the time savings from optimizing those intersections better, it equates to about $1.8 million per year in time, fuel, and emission savings. See, that's what I'm talking about. That is, those are some staggering numbers. Yeah, and that's just nine intersections. We're now in 50 intersections Whoa. across Pittsburgh. So when you start to extrapolate that out, and there's 600 total signaled intersections in Pittsburgh. <laughs> exactly. And they plan to deploy about 150 more over the next couple of years. Um, so you can um, really start to see how when you operate an entire network with that type you of technology. You see the scale and how that goes. So Absolutely. how did you link up with the city of Pittsburgh? I mean, it's something where it's like they don't want to just like turn over their streets to anybody. I mean, obviously yeah. you've got some pretty good cred with, with, with CMU ties and everything, but like how do you actually get an engagement with the city of Pittsburgh? You're like, let's make this happen. Yeah, so the way it all started was um, it, it was also part of the Traffic 21 initiative gotcha. within yeah. um, CMU that you've probably heard about, maybe Absolutely. even talked about today. So, you know, that added instant credibility. But the funders of the initial deployment were actually the, Han the Heinz Foundation, the Hillman Foundation. Oh, so they had foundational support then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I believe it was Henry Hillman. Um, that makes a lot that, of sense. Uh, you know, was stuck in traffic and, and knew about some, you know, some of the <laughs> I have know, billions technology. of dollars. I want to fix this problem. Yeah, <laughs> technology enhancements that, that CMU was working on. I said, why can't we combine these efforts? So it, it was it was really um, a, a bit of a public-private you know partnership, if you will, that really got this off the ground and going. Very cool. I love that. And so then, obviously, you started with the first nine intersections. You keep scaling out. What are you learning along the way as you add intersections? What's, what's coming up? How are you course correcting and making it better? Yeah. So th that's the th that's really what happened in the early years is taking it from the lab and then out onto the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, was a was a big undertaking. And every time we deployed a few more intersections, we learned a little bit more. Um, tweak the technology and uh, and really helped um, drive more improvement. Now there's really um, the, the, the technology, the core technology is in great shape. Now it's about building tools around it to allow us to okay. deploy it more quickly mm, and yeah. even allow cities themselves or partners that might be selling this technology okay. to cities uh, to deploy it themselves. You got to make it easy to deploy, right? It's got to be scalable. Yeah. You got to make it scalable as yeah. far as that is. So what, what? So what is it that that's making it scalable? To make it snap on or turnkey like like what what is it that makes that happen yeah so for example um we put the optimization software at every single intersection mm -hmm. um but then that uh each intersection can communicate back to a central server so if we want to push a software update out we just push it out through that um, centralized uh, communication mechanism we can update all the servers if one individual um uh intersection happens to have uh trouble it, it can alert us right an intersection might not be performing well and maybe the video detection has gone out the system can tell us it can tell you and then you can, can then correct from that yeah exactly we, we try to do as much remotely as possible and when it comes down to software issues those are easy to solve but sometimes the other systems that we rely on um, the, like yeah the detection sometimes people have to go out and fix the, that and you got to rely on that yep. so how much this would, would this rely on 5g yeah, to so, really make things be fast. Yeah, so, right. So th that's a great question. We are generally agnostic to this sort of brewing. Uh, I don't want to call it a battle, but there's there's a lot of I'd call it a battle. Uh, between, <laughs> you know, DSRC, um, you know, five G, other communication systems. We don't care how the connected vehicles or other systems communicate with us. We're agnostic to whether it's five G or DSRC. Um, or others, but we just want that communication. We want that information. So we're open to all communication uh, okay. mechanisms. Very cool, which is yeah. great because uh, these have different levels yeah. of connectivity, so you can scale no matter what the, the situation is. Yeah, for, for example, something else that's really cool, two things, it's not just about cars, um, and vehicles, it's also about pedestrians and talking Good about point. communication. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it's a, it came and, tell me more about yeah, that. Yeah, and, and also that ties back to CMU. So um, one of our co-founders still has a lab, uh, a research lab at CMU and still does work over there. And they did a project for the federal government with um, disabled pedestrians. So for example, a blind pedestrian can walk up to a SureTrack enabled intersection and SureTrack can tell that blind pedestrian on their cell phone um, oh. verbally for example, you have 12 seconds to cross before the light changes. Wow, that's powerful. And if that pedestrian uh, knows that it, that they need more time, they can verbally communicate and say, I, I need an extension. And it'll hold the light. That goes back to the intersection oh. and we'll extend that intersection to allow a more safer 
uh, time for that pedestrian to right. cross the intersection. Now, that's what I call smart city at that point. Yeah. Holy heck, that is amazing. Absolutely. And the concept is the same, whether you're a pedestrian communicating with the intersection or a vehicle. Um, they call it um, I2X, intersection I2X. to everything okay. uh, communication. That is powerful stuff. Yeah. And think about, there, there's also been a, a big... Uh, influx of bike riders in the city of Pittsburgh and Amen. all yes. in all okay. cities. So um, lots of times video detectors have a hard time identifying bicycles. So think about uh, a lot of them, they they have apps where they have their phone up on their, uh, oh, yeah. uh, just push a button and you can communicate with the intersection and we'll, we'll have a better idea what about as to light, where the bicycle man, right? is there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And how we best need to serve that, uh, uh, that, that bike. So we're, we're multimodal and try to um, uh, handle every type of, you know, mode that, um, that folks might use it transit and buses as well um we've okay. we've been working with the uh, uh, pittsburgh port authority on their buses um i think that's generally been through dsrc communi communicating um when a bus is coming up to an intersection how many people are on that bus so that we can um, prioritize um uh, transit if you have a hundred people on a bus you know you you want to move that bus you know more quickly than even 10 cars with one individual driver in each it's a more efficient way to move people, and uh, and, and those folks are are, are are you know paying to that use is. the probably the, one of the more efficient uh, modes of transportation. You're blowing my mind left and right here about all this stuff. Because yeah, it's I, really I was thinking it's just timing lights. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's yeah. coming down to all forms, whether you're on a bicycle, whether you're a pedestrian, if you have a disability, and being safe in the city. So I'm assuming that as cities spin this up, other cities see it and they're like, we want some of this rapid flow tech coming yeah. our way. Yeah. Is that is there is there a lot of word of mouth that kind of People see it in action and, and want to yeah. try deploying it and test it out in their areas? Yeah, and that's really how we started, all by word of mouth. Um, so we first deployed in Pittsburgh, and then closely after that, I, I believe it was the mayor of Atlanta heard um, uh, the mayor of Pittsburgh talking about um, th this deployment of, of our technology. And the mayor of Atlanta said, we, we need to get that here. So we our second city was Atlanta. Um, we then deployed in Portland, Maine, uh, Quincy, Massachusetts, and, wow. and Needham, Massachusetts. Okay. And um, so we're in five cities now, and we have seven cities that have already uh, committed to deploying at some point this summer. So you're in, busy. Yeah. And, and oh two, my goodness, two of those are in Canada. So we now have our you're, first. You're two international, international now, right? We are international, <laughs> I yeah. love it. And yeah. what's cool is one one is in Eastern Canada and one is in Western Canada. So we're getting oh my, you're going in yeah. different directions. Which is which is again going back to um, we're working with partners on those deployments who are local and giving them the ability to deploy this I this see. technology because right. they're out deploying other technologies like the video detectors. So as they're doing that, they then put your stuff. And piggyback it on, yeah. on top of that stuff to go yeah. with it then and, and that's what we're working on now is to make sure that uh, again it's scalable and, and partners can deploy it and not have to rely on us that is just amazing stuff and you're doing this right here in pittsburgh spinoff from carnegie Mellon university so what attracted you to, to to come to the company and help lead this, this, this operation forward well i've been really fortunate um all of the businesses that i've worked on since leaving politics and government and, and going to business school and, and being in the technology space have all had a big societal impact mm -hmm. and, and are improving you know people's lives and uh so, so that's what drew me uh the, the most of this is the the opportunity to you know just impact people's um, time savings fuel savings the emission savings and we haven't even talked about safety there have been um, uh, third-party uh, analyses of, of our systems and other adaptive systems that show they can reduce um, uh, um, traffic safety incidents by 20%. That's, so yeah, when that's you can save something. people time, money, um, like win, uh, win, 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 less you pollution, know? you know, safer streets, um, better experience for pedestrians, better experience for transit riders, then um, yeah, that's that's really exciting, and, and that's what attracted me to the business. It's just Absolutely. a fun opportunity, and it all started right here at Carnegie Mellon University, which I think it is did. just so exciting. I always say that's part of Pittsburgh's secret sauce is having universities like CMU and Pitt. They help these types of technologies develop and yeah. go into the marketplace, and then do the positive things that they do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, as I said in the beginning, um, I, I'm not from Pittsburgh originally. I transplanted here about 20 years ago, and um, I could not be happier. That's and, great. And I've been in technology this whole time, and, and you're right. There's just a, a fountain of ideas and and um, and, and real quality um, uh, you know, product and, and technology coming out of these universities here. So it's, it's really exciting.
so with all these projects coming up, what's, what's, what's the next thing for, for Rapid Flow? Yeah, so right now it's just growth. It's, yeah. um, it's, it's getting beyond word of mouth and um, focusing on marketing and, um, and, and just uh, driving more customer adoption. We're really excited about this, getting this technology out there further. And then we've got some exciting ideas about sort of a next generation application. Basically the same thing, optimizing traffic. But with cities being constrained for you know their budgets and how they can pay for these types of solutions, we've got some interesting ideas about how this might be able to drive um, uh, new revenue generation uh, opportunities for cities. So um, awesome. I, it, it's sort of nuanced. We probably don't have time to go into all the details yeah. today, and it's, it's a little bit exciting that you're working on this, right? right? Absolutely. So, last question of the day: What are your thoughts on the Tesla? And if you could buy one. Oh, I, I think I think the Teslas are amazing. Um, I, I haven't been in them often, but the few times I have, I'm just uh, really intrigued by. Um, I'm not a mechanical guy. I'm, I'm, okay. a, I'm a software guy. <laughs> I'm a software know. guy. But, uh, hey, um, you met you. This is your match in heaven here. Yeah, yeah, here. yeah. So, so I, I really like what what Tesla is doing. Um, but given our space, we have to be agnostic to uh, all, course, all modes of transportation. Hey, so man. whether it's a Tesla, a Ford, a, a bus, or a bicycle, exactly. or if you're just using People your own, you know your Adidas or your Nikes, um, <laughs> we, we want to make sure that we get you there as quickly as possible. And that's why we're glad Rapid Flows in Pittsburgh doing what yeah. it's doing. And yeah. so glad you could be part of our road trip 2.0, having a lot of fun with it. Thanks again, Griffin. Appreciate yeah, great. It, it was a lot of fun. Cool stuff.